Hey, welcome to Carm 3D on the t -t tube. Uh, today I'm going to introduce you to compositing. And uh, I know some of you new people out there are, are not total noobs and uh, you already know what compositing is, but you may want to stick around because later on in the video, this very video, I'm going to show you uh, a neat little uh, way you can take advantage of compositing that might save you some rendering time. You may know it already, you may not, but we'll see. Okay, so here's a pretty simple scene. Granted, very simple. Probably doesn't even need compositing. But let's say, for example, for sake of argument, that this is a four-minute long commercial, excuse me, animation, character animation piece. This guy's going to dance around, do all sorts of, sorts of fun stuff. And what we have on this character is a complicated uh, material with you know, subsurface scattering or something like that. Something that's going to take it a long time to render. And on the ground, we have some big old sphere lights. So let's take a render and see what that looks like. It's going through it. Firing on all four cylinders, as you can see. And here it comes. some anti-aliasing. It's almost done. I'll be your girl for all seasons. Da -da -de 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 da 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 Okay, it's done. Alright, here's our render. So, you know, it took 30 seconds or so, it's not too bad, but if we were doing this for reels, we'd have, you know, clothing and maybe hair and all sorts of other fun stuff that's going to add to your rendering time. So let's look at ways we can cut down on the rendering time without sacrificing much in quality. You can see I've, I've got some spherical lights here that's giving us nice soft shadows and back here it's pleasing to the eye. But what can we do to speed this up? Well, with compositing, we can do this this way. I'm going to select my object here, go into the properties, hit render, and I'm going to say unseen by camera. And again, people who know all about this stuff, just bear with me. Or maybe skip to the end. Okay, so the deal with these big old soft lights is, you can see I have the quality set to 6. The bigger they are, the more of this quality setting and or anti-aliasing you're going to need to give you a nice smooth gradient on your, on the, the width of the shadow. Uh, the less of this quality you have, the more grainy it's going to look. And so if you want the smooth stuff, this is what you do. So what I would do now is render the frame. And you can probably tell it's going a little faster without the character there. But that's not all that this is about. This is this trick I'm showing you here. So that's good. Okay, so we'll save this as a JPEG. I'll say ground.jpg. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back to my little character here and put that thing back off so now he's seen by the camera. And I'm going to choose the ground and tell it unseen by camera. Okay, now this is very important. I'm going to go into Render Globals Output. I'm going to choose a 32 bit file format instead of JPEG. And when I say 32-bit, I mean 24-bit color plus the 8-bit grayscale alpha channel. So I want to choose Targa 32. I like that one because it compresses. And this is a very, 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 very important setting right here. Alpha format. Okay? And I'll show you what that does in more detail later, but I'm going to choose Unpremultiply Alpha. 
and if you're in the latest and greatest Lightwave, this thing will pop up and say this option will disable backgrounds for the final output image. That's fine. And uh, choose the file name. And I'll call this... I'll call it Putty because that's his name. And I'm going to set my render range from 0 to 0. And render scene. No. So here he is rendering just a guy. Oh, you know, I forgot, I forgot a step. This is a whole part about where we can save time. Uh, let's go in this view here. Okay. You can see I got these two fairly ginormous lights here. Now, these lights, let me zoom in a little bit, have to be big so they cast that nice pleasing soft shadow that I wanted. But it's primarily for the ground. When the shadow is on the character, the distance it's falling and therefore widening is not as great or is not as obviously visibly great. Okay, it's still the same angle. It's the same amount of spread per inch as it falls away from the, the source to the subject that the shadow receives. In this case, we're talking about the subject receiving its own shadow. So, what we can do is we can reduce the size of these lights. And, because we did that, we can reduce the quality. Because they're not so widespread, they do not need quite as much anti-aliasing and or quality. And because it's not falling at such a great distance, it's only going from, say, the head to the shoulders, or the nose to the cheek, or what have you, you're not going to notice the fact that the shadows are sharper than the shadows hitting the ground. So let's go back to the camera view and render my scene, my one frame scene. So, to the trained eye, in other words, to someone who knows what's going on, you may notice that this shadow is a little sharper, but it's still, it's not objectionable, because the important part is I want that softness out here on the ground. So it's saving a 32-bit image now, as soon as it's done rendering. Oh, you know what? I'm stopping this because it's going on frame 2 now. I think I... Yeah, I had too many frames set there. Okay, so that's good. Let me save my scene and show you how to composite. Once again, this is we're going back for the new people here. You do not need a sophisticated compositing system for compositing. It sure helps. It makes things a lot easier and a lot more flexible. But if you cannot afford it, you can do it right in Lightwave. Just be aware you can only do one layer at a time. So this is where we're going. I'm going in more windows, compositing options. And that brings up this panel. And you can see we have a place we can put a background image. So I'm going to say load image. And I'm choosing my ground and foreground image. I'm loading Mr. Putty. Now he's got the alpha channel built into it, so we don't need to worry about loading a separate alpha channel. And, uh, you know, it's actually been a while since I did compositing within Lightwave, but let's render that and see what that looks like. <laughs> 